Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at control for incorporation and the subpart F income. This topic is covered in international accounting as well as international taxation. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. If you like my lectures, please like them share them put them in playlists let the world know about them if you're benefiting from my lectures it means other people might benefit as well so please share the wealth on my website in addition to my lectures i do have additional resources such as the powerpoint slides notes multiple choice true false additional exercises 2000 plus cpa questions please check out my website studypal.co is an art artificial intelligence study buddy platform that match you with someone who's studying for the CPA or CFA. If you're interested, please check them out. They're in 85 countries and 2,800 cities. Let's talk about controlled foreign corporation or CFC. What is the big idea behind this controlled foreign corporation? Well, it's a foreign, it's, it's located outside the US, it's a corporation, and somehow someone controls it. So what's the big idea? The big idea is before 1962, US companies would set up a subsidiary in a tax haven country like the Cayman Island, and the Cayman Island will, 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 will record the sales to non-US customers, the money comes into the Cayman Island, and it's tax haven, it's tax at a low rate. Then the subsidiary would lend money to the, to the parent company in the US, the money will transfer to the US, but it will be in form of loans rather than dividend. So simply put, the money will sit in the Cayman, Cayman Island, tax deferred. That's the idea. So Congress obviously figured this out, and in 1962, they decided to have what's called tax, uh, a new tax classification for corporations, which is controlled foreign corporation, CFC. The purpose was, again, obviously, to crack down on the use of tax having by U.S. companies seeking to avoid paying U.S. taxes. Now, bear in mind, you cannot avoid paying taxes forever if you bring if you bring the money in, into the U.S. Um, via, uh, via dividend, then you have to pay taxes. But also, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act changed that as well. But I'm just giving you a, a historical overview. Okay, So U.S. Congress created this controlled foreign corporation rules in 1962. Okay. So what is a controlled foreign corporation? Is any corporation in which and it uh, uh, is any foreign corporation in which US shareholders hold more than 50% of the voting power or the fair market value of the stock simply put if they control the company more than 50% then this is a foreign corporation a CFC a foreign controlled corporation. Now we have to understand how do we account for that 50%? So who is counted in the 50%? Do all sharehold are all shareholders counted in the 50%? Well, only those shareholders, it could be a corporation, individual, tax resident, they either directly or indirectly own 10% or more. So when we're counting, so if this individual owns 6%, this individual owns 12%, this individual owns 15%. Well, guess what? The six individual is not counted. This individual is counted 12%. This individual is counted 15%. So when we're counting toward the 50%, only the individuals or the entities, again, it doesn't have to be individuals. It could be a corporation. It could be a partnership. It could be a trust. But the point is, as the stockholders, they have to own more than 10%, okay, to be accounted in the aggregate up to 50%. So, simply put, if you have if you have a if you have a corporation that owns entirely by, by one U.S. shareholder and it's structured overseas, that's it. That's clearly a, a CFC. Okay? Why? Because it's one shareholder, and one shareholder owns how many of the shares? Who? One hundred percent. That's more than fifty percent. Okay? So this rule is targeting corporation owned by one or few U.S. individuals. So you have maybe three people or four people. Each one owns twenty-five percent. Uh, for example, if we have a corporation with one hundred individuals and each own four percent, then that's not a CPC. Uh, that's not a C uh, controlled foreign, not CPC. Controlled foreign corporation. That's not a controlled foreign corporation. So what if it's not? What if it's not a controlled foreign corporation? It means you, if it is, if it is, if it's not, then it's good. If it's not, we, we don't have to worry about anything. But if, if it is, means you as shareholder with 10% or more, this individual here in yellow and this individual in green, 
or more than taxed on certain income, whether they receive the cash or not. Then under those circumstances, those individuals that own more than 10%, if it's a controlled foreign corporation, whether certain income is taxed or not, uh, whether they receive the money or not, it's taxed to them. It's basically like a tax, tax through entities like a partnership or an S corporation. Simply put, you cannot shelter that money because you are part of this uh, uh, controlled foreign uh, company corporation and you own more than 50% as part of, of the more than 10% as part of the 50% ownership. Okay. More about controlled foreign corporation. All majority foreign subsidiaries are controlled foreign corporations. Simply put, if a company outside the U.S., if it's if, if the subsidiary of the U.S., it is a controlled foreign corporation. It's simply put, it's the majority of the owners will be. Sometimes it's the parent company is the owner of that subsidiary, and the parent company is a U.S. citizen. Therefore, it's controlled foreign corporation. Okay. So generally speaking, the United States exempt from U.S. taxation income. But income earned, remember the subsidiaries. So if, you, if you're operating as a subsidiary, remember what we talked about subsidiary, well, as long as you don't bring the money to the US, you don't have to be taxed. Remember, if you are operating as a branch, then that's different. You remember we talked about the branch versus the subsidiary. So if you're a subsidiary, and again, most subsidiaries are CFCs. If you're a subsidiary, that's not a big deal, okay? However, you don't have an exemption for the so-called subpart F income earned by this corporation. Now, we need to talk about this subpart F income. So basically, if you are a subsidiary, you don't have to worry about anything unless you have this type of income. Now, what is this type of income? That's the question. Well, look at it this way. Subpart F income is taxed currently similar to foreign branch. What is foreign branch? Simply, if you have a foreign branch, it means you are. it's as, it's as if you are operating in the U.S. And subpart F income, it's as if you are operating in the U.S. Okay, so what is subpart F income? This is what we need to talk about next. So simply put, we're going to talk a little bit more about it. It's not, there's no easy, you know, one answer for it. Can be characterized as income with little or no economic connection with the F, with the foreign controlled uh, country. So simply put, it's, a, it's an income that can be easily shifted easily movable. It has no economic connection to that country. It can be moved to another country if need be. So you're moving it to a low tax jurisdiction just for the purpose of gaining a tax advantage. That's not because there's economic benefit. There's not no economic sense, it's just for tax purposes. So what are those typical uh, type, typically, what, those, what does those income include? It include income derived from insurance of U.S. risk, like insurance income, because you could move insurance income anywhere you want to. Income from countries engaged in international boycott. Um, certain, illegal, certain illegal payments. But the fourth category is what we're going to be focusing on, because this is the most common. It's when you have income, foreign base company income. Okay? That's the most important category of subpart F income and includes the following. So we need, we're going to focus on this. We don't we really don't care about the other three, but the other three are, if you saw them in a multiple choice questions, they are considered subpart F income. So if you have insurance income, that's subpart income. If you uh, if you're getting income from a country where it's being where we're boycotting, that's subpart income. If you receive a legal payment, that's subpart income. But we don't worry about this. So we need to worry about those F. B, C, F, B, C income. What those F, B, C income have three types. Passive income, F, B, C, which is kind of the foreign personal holding company, like personal holding company in the U.S. Sales income, or we call it F, B, C sales income, or service income, which we call it F, B, C ser service income. Those are the three that we're going to be focusing on, starting with the first one, passive income. Well, Hopefully you know what passive income is. Passive income is when you're earning the money without doing anything. For example, if you have stocks, bonds, if you are have rental property. So this include interest. If you receive interest, dividend, royalties, rent, okay, capital gains from sales of assets, access of foreign gains over foreign currency losses, other than the one that has to do with your business. Okay, Though all of those are passive income, and because they are passive income, they are under foreign-based company income. That's part of subpart F. So if you receive any of those, then guess what? You cannot shelter that income. That's the point. Another type of income that you cannot shelter is foreign-based company sales income. So what is that? Well, it's when the 
controlled foreign corporation or the contro controlled foreign company makes sales outside its country of incorporation. Well, let's let's kind of look, look at an example. We have the USA here, US of A, and we have Ireland. Okay, so the US company created a subsidiary in Ireland, sub in Ireland. And guess what? This Irish company, all what they do is they sell to Germany. That's all. That's all what they do. So they sell to Germany. That's their income. So simply put, they make sales outside its country of incorporation. Well, if that's the case, then that's considered subpart F income. Simply put, it means it has to be taxed. Now, it's not considered uh, sales from a subsidiary. Okay. Now, you might be asking, hold on a second. Why doesn't Apple then pay taxes in the U.S. on that sales? Here's the thing with Apple. Yes, the Apple Inc. in the U.S., we have Apple Inc. in the U.S., owns Apple subsidiary in Ireland. They own Apple subsidiaries in Ireland. So what's the problem? And most of the sales of the Irish sub is around, around for in, in other countries around the world. So why does the Irish sub the irish apple sub does not pay taxes in the u.s here's why because the irish sub what happened is is they own the intellectual property the intellectual property of apple they own at least half of it i don't know the amount but they own the intellectual property simply put the irish apple subsidiary is getting their merchandise from china getting their merchandise from China. Therefore, this relationship is basically broken because they're getting the merchandise from China because they own the intellectual property, then they're selling it to Germany, okay? So um, the sales income, the uh, foreign-based company income, it's when you, when the US company sells it to Ireland and Ireland sells it to Germany. So it's, the, it's just like a conduit. That's not the case in Apple. And this is why, in case you're wondering, why, how does Apple doesn't pay taxes on that foreign income? And it's, it's not only Apple. Um, I remember I told you about Skype um, owned by Microsoft. They operate in Luxembourg as well as Google and, and, and all the other big companies. That's what, they, that's what they do. So simply put, it's income derived by the foreign corporation where the foreign corporation where the controlled foreign corporation has little connection with the process that generate the income and the related party is involved. Simply put, they are not they they're not they're not participating in producing the uh, producing the item, okay? And there is a, late, a related party involved. What does it mean related party? It means the parent company is selling them the the assets, okay? If the controlled foreign corporation earns income from the sale of property to customers outside of their country of incorporation, again. Again, think about the U.S. and Ireland, but don't think about Apple. And either the supplier or the customer is a related party. So let's assume now the U.S. is a related party, they're a subsidiary. This constitute foreign-based company sales. Okay, And foreign-based company sales usually involve three countries. The parent company and the main country selling the product to the subsidiary, then the subsidiary selling the product to a third country. Simply put, a U.S. parent manufacturers uh, manufactures a product that it sells it to its controlled foreign corporation in Hong Kong in which it turns it sells it to a customer in Japan so you have USA we have Hong Kong and we have Japan first we sell it to Hong Kong then Hong Kong sells the product to Japan so the Hong Kong is not really selling it within Hong Kong so Hong Kong is just a conduit it, it, it it's on the route okay therefore the sales made here it can, it can no longer be considered a, a sales by a subsidiary that's considered sub part F income and it has to be taxed in the U.S. now. Okay, tax in the U.S. now. Okay. Another example would be, will be Ulysses Limited is a controlled foreign corporation organized in the U.K. and owned 100% by Joyce, a U.S. company. So Joyce owned this company. Ulysses purchases finished inventory from Joyce and sell the inventory a customer in Hong Kong. Simply put, we go uh, a, a, com a company in England that's owned by U.S. Um, by by uh, a U.S. company. They buy the stuff from the U.S. company and they sell it to Hong Kong. Well, guess what? This is foreign-based um, company sales income. What does that mean? This is subpar F income. It means it's taxed now. 
it stacks the profit is stacks now you cannot defer it this is what we mean by that there is there are some exception to the to the support sub chapter or sub part sub chapter f income an exception applies to um, to the property that is manufactured produced or grown or if it's extracted in the country in which the controlled foreign corporation was organized or created and to property sold for use consumption or disposition within that country so if you're manufacturing the country if if you're if you're manufacturing the product there or if you're extracting the product there and it's being consumed there or being sold within that country then then that's an exception then it's no longer foreign based company sales okay in both of these situations fewer than three countries are involved and the controlled foreign corporation has participated in the economic process so the point is that that subsidiary is not only a conduit it's it's actually doing something it's producing the product manufacturing the product growing the product uh, producing the product the 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 resources are being extracted in that country they're being consumed there if that's the case then it's no longer sub sub chapter i call it sub part sub chapter f income okay for example in the previous example of that uk uh, subsidiary purchased raw material from joyce and prefers substantial manufacturing activity in the uk before selling the inventory to customers in hong kong then the income is not fbc income so as long as they do some transformation in in um, in uh, in the uk then then they will no longer be considered uh, under sub chapter f income okay even without the manufacturing activity sales to customer within the uk would also be precluded they will be because it's not would not produce fbc sales income because there, there's no third country involved if they buy the stuff from the us and they sell it and if the, and the uk subsidiary sell the product within the uk then guess what it's no longer it's no longer subject to sub chapter f income service income is another category uh, foreign based service income is income derived from the performance of services for or on behalf of a related person and performed outside the country in which the controlled foreign corporation was created or organized basically the same concept except here rather than selling goods you are providing services but it's exact same concept exact same concept income from services performed in connection with the sale of property by a controlled foreign corporation that, that has manufactured produced grown or extracted such property is not of course if that's the case if it's manufactured produced or grown within within the, that territory then it's not okay now you have to remember that a large amount of offshore profit is active trade or business income not involving related person so most of the subsidiaries outside the u.s u.s subsidiaries that are outside the u.s they don't participate in that sub, -sub chapter f income you know they escape the definition what does that mean if they, if they escape the definition their income is deferred until we bring it back to the u.s they're not subject to immediate taxation and remember the rules were changed the rules were changed recently where you can bring it back and you have a dividend receipt deduction okay so determination of the amount of controlled foreign corporation income currently taxable how, how do we determine how much of it is the tax how much of it is currently taxable if the subpart f income is less than five percent of the controlled foreign corporation so simply put if you make that much money and that much is considered subpart f income then you don't have to worry about this part so if it's so it's, if it's a small amount of your income is subpart f income which is less than five percent if the subpart subpart f income is between five and seventy percent of the foreign controlled corporation so it's if it's that much well guess what if it's between 50 and 70 if it's if 30 percent is then 30 percent of it is taxable now if the subpart sub sub chapter f income or subpart f income is greater than 70 percent so if you have if it's greater than 70 percent then all of your income is taxed now because the majority of your income is sub chapter f income therefore you know if it's even it's only 80 or 72 or 75 it's more than 70 then it's 100 percent taxable now there is a safe harbor rule uh, what is the safe harbor rule and hopefully if you understand the safe harbor rule you say okay this makes sense now simply put if the foreign tax rate is greater than 90 percent of the u.s corporate income tax rate then none of the controlled foreign company or corporation income is considered to be sub part f income what does that mean in the u.s right now the tax rate is 21 percent so as long if we multiply this by 90 percent it's approximately 19 percent give or take 
like 18.9 to be more specific. So as long as the tax rate in that country in which you are operating is 18.9 or greater, which is 90% of the U.S. Uh, tax rate, then you don't have to worry about this subpart or subchapter um, sub uh, uh, F income. Okay, with the current tax rate of 21%, U.S. multinational corporation need not to be concerned with this rule. As uh, in countries where the rate, uh, where the effective rate is 18.9% or higher, because guess what? If you're operating in a place where the tax rate is higher than the U.S., then then you're not really trying to avoid paying taxes because you are paying more than 90% of U.S. taxes. Okay, and so these countries are not considered tax haven as far as subpart F purposes are concerned. Okay, so the country effective rate, the way we, we compute the county effective rate is a combination of the corporate income tax and the withholding tax rate applicable to dividend. This is how you determine whether the effective rate is 90% or more of U.S. tax rate, which is 20, happens to be 21%. Now, um, if you have any additional questions about this topic, please email me. If you want additional resources about this topic, visit my website if you want to access the PowerPoints as well as other uh, as well as other features. In the next session, we would look at foreign tax credit. Um, again, if you visit my website, please consider subscribing. It's a lot of resources and it's an investment in your career. Good luck and study hard.